ConsumerTips.com channel, where since 1999, our team of consumer advocates has been protecting and educating you, the American car buying public, in all areas of buying new cars, used cars, leasing and financing, and avoiding dealer scams. And we also do videos on auto repair. And on today's video here, we know why you're here, because you have a problem with the check engine line on your dashboard that came on that says something like your ABS brakes are unavailable. So if you have the ABS unavailable light on, stay tuned, because we're going to show you everything about how to fix that today and it all starts right now okay yeah so you'll definitely want to start the engine and make sure that you have that condition active and showing on the screen there okay, so here's what you are likely to see here even if it's not a Mercedes going to see something very similar to this so both of your icons for the anti-skid will come on here it will tell you about your ABS brake it'll tell you that it, they are inoperative to check owner's manual and over here you'll also see that your main check engine light might also come on as well too because they generated an engine fault code. Okay now there's a handful of common causes that we're going to run through real quick here for you. The easiest one to try is the steering wheel position. Some people have reported that if you turn your steering wheel all the way over to the left and then all the way back over to the right again that it might take care of the problem and it goes away. Another possibility is it could be the brake light switch which is the switch that's underneath your brake pedal, also known as the stoplight switch. Other people have reported, believe it or not, that their glove box, if you open up your glove box and if you see your glove box lamp is off or the fuse is blown for that, try replacing that and that sometimes has helped people in the past as well. Some people have reported that you know they check all of the fuses in their fuse box and if you find one that's blown then go ahead and replace it and see if that fixes it. Okay the best way for you to solve this problem is to scan the car's computer first to scan out that fault code that started this whole thing in the first place. Now in order for you to make this repair here today folks you absolutely have to have one of these. It's an OBD2 reader here. You're not going to be able to check the engine and read the computer out and find out what the fault codes are without having one of these so you can't do the repair without it now your first time out you don't have to buy anything fancy but we do highly recommend you buy one that's a Bluetooth OBD2 reader and this right here just plugs into the OBD2 port underneath your dashboard to read out the error codes now you don't have to go all out your first time you can if you want to you can buy the $150 iCarsoft which is probably one of the best ones out there those are considered to be the best two of the uh, readers out there and especially where you can get them tailored for your particular car like your Mercedes or whatever and they're more powerful they can go in and read many more codes and they can reset the check engine light whereas sometimes the cheapy units can't now a lot of owners of Mercedes believe it or not do not know how to open their hood and it's actually quite simple but it's not in a very easy to notice place like you would expect with most other cars so it's right down here you see that red handle right there you just pull on that Okay, then if you're using a Bluetooth enabled OBD2 reader like we're using, we like to use the Torque app. That's a popular app that you can get for free in your download store there. And okay, so once you get into the Torque app, if you look in the middle there, you'll see the fault code, that little engine icon. You want to click on that. Okay, and then once that comes up here, it'll tell you to tap here to scan. So now it's going to request the fault codes. And it's showing historic fault because it's read it before, so it, you know we've already gone through this before. So anyway, you click on it here. So it found a fault code C0034. So now you do a web lookup on it to see what that means. And you'll get this problemcodes.net page that comes up. And there's your subfault right there. So it says front wheel speed sensor. Okay, so here's a quick explanation here that will show you what's going on. So we created this graphic here for you that shows your car here with the ECU, that's your main computer there in the middle there. And you can see all of those green wires goes to each of the four wheels here. So your ABS brakes system has these speed sensors in the hub of every wheel. And it feeds the input back to the ECU along with the brake pedal switch and your steering wheel because it needs to know the position of your steering wheel at any given time. And keep in mind, this is an oversimplified diagram of what's really happening. Now, 
here on this next slide we're going to introduce a fault code. If you see on the front right side tire there we have a fault code C0034 which simply means that ABS wheel speed sensor died. So now you see the question mark in the middle of the ECU there. So now he's wondering what do I do? So that's when they start to freak out on you. Okay, so here on this last graphic we made here for you, you can see we made it more complex. We showed you the green box up at the top that says other ABS sensors. So there's several other sensors that come into the computer also from your ABS brakes system, as well as, you know, the brake pedal switch and the steering wheel. Then at the bottom, you can see that blue box that says other car sensors and fuses. We've seen cases in the past where other sensors can erroneously trigger this as well, as well as an unrelated fuse in an unrelated circuit going bad. And so, but in here, in, in this case here, we're showing you that fault code again, C0034. And once the ECU sees that, it, it freaks out and trips that error message there, which then turns on the ABS icon and sometimes the check engine light there in your dashboard. And if you have a bad sensor, you have to replace it because it can't get a reading right now on the speed of the wheel in order to determine how to best apply the ABS brakes. So we have to replace this right front wheel speed sensor here in order for the ABS system to once again be working properly. So let me just warn you ahead of time, if you haven't done a job like this before, this is a four hour repair, potentially, depending on which sensor you have to replace. So make sure you start earlier in the day. That way, if you have to run to an auto parts store, you'll still have plenty of time to complete the job. Now, since the access to the front wheel ABS wheel speed sensor is through here, because it's attached to the hub, that means we have to remove this front tire here. We need access to the back of this whole cavity here in order to get that sensor out of there. So this also means you need to get your car jack out. And if you have any locking wheel nuts here, or if any of these lock, you need to get your, your find your key socket there so that you can get your tire off. Now you also have to take proper safety measures here and make sure you chalk the wheels. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, then you're looking at it right here. You can either buy the professional tire chalks or you can just get two by fours of wood work pretty good here. And the idea, like you see here, is to wedge them in, kick them in good. Make sure they're wedged in nice and tight on the front and the back side of each of the other wheels so that the car cannot roll. So you want to make sure you're parked on a flat surface if you can and shock all of the wheels. All right, now some cars, like the Mercedes, a lot of the Mercedes come with their own wheel chocks. So they come flattened like this, and you just open it up, stick it in the slot, and put this behind the wheel, and you're done. So there's another example of a wheel chock here, an official wheel chock to stick behind your wheel. And of course, make sure you set the parking brake. Other thing that you need to know here is where is the appropriate spot to jack your car. And usually there's a spot for the front and the rear tire. So we're going to show you here on this car where it is. And you can see it's right here. See that? So that's where your jack is supposed to go. Okay. Now do you remember that magic spot we showed you where the jack goes? So there it is all hooked up and ready to go. Okay, so before you even jack up the car, you have to loosen the lug nuts first because you don't want to try to loosen really tight lug nuts while the wheel is spinning when the car is jacked up. If you're finding it hard to loosen the nut here, you can get a pipe here like this PVC pipe and slide it over the crowbar there. That will give you some more momentum there, moment arm. You just push it down and loosen it right up. So once the jack is in place there, it's just very simple. Crank it up. cordless motorized ratchet that I use here. We've been using these for years. I highly suggest you get one of them. Makes real quick work. And you take the wheel off. 
Okay, so more safety precautions here. Make sure you keep your hands away from underneath here. Like just in case the car comes, boom, flying down, you don't want to get your fingers sliced off. All right, so here's your new part here. This is the front wheel ABS wheel speed sensor. So this right here is what plugs into the hub of the wheel. And then this end of it here plugs into the wire that leads back up into the control module. Now you can pay the full price for the part at the dealer or we'll give you links below to Amazon where you can go and get most of the parts at half the price or sometimes you find third party parts that are maybe one third the price even. But you can at least start your search there. And when you're searching for parts on Amazon, make sure that you check the fitment for your car. You always have to enter in your year, manufacturer, and model number to make sure that that part will work on your car. And it will tell you right there on the listing. Okay, so the ABS brake sensor then, as you look over the back side of the hub here, you can see we have it all lit up right down there. You see that 10 millimeter nut right there? That's what's securing it on to the hub so we have to loosen that nut right there and then get it out you have to use the open end of the wrench because you're not going to get back in there with the closed end of the wrench there's just not enough room okay so now that you've pulled the nut out see how the ABS sensor just pops right out see so now you've got it out now it unsnaps off of this clip right here and you can see where it feeds up there. So now we have to find out up in there where it goes to and unplug the other end of it. Okay, now we have to remove this whole shield here. So this shield on this car is actually divided in half. So it basically starts here and goes all the way around here. So this whole part of the wheel well shield has to come out. And for that, we're going to use these, this 10 millimeter socket here but we have to take this out in order to get access to where the other side of the cable for the ABS wheel speed sensor plugs in. Okay, so you can see here, you don't have to take the shield all of the way out, just need to get it down and out of the way because we need to get right back up top here. You can see it way back up in there where it connects into the panel. See, so there's where it's located, right up in there. Okay, now if you look closely here at this mechanism, the way this works, see this, this little latch up top here? You have to press it down with a flathead. See like that? Okay. So let's try it here. We push it down and then pull it out. There you go. Okay, so now the two just separate. They're, they kind of fit right up against each other. Okay, so after unsnapping it off of a couple of more clips in the back there, we are now free of the old one. Okay, so now we're going to put these two back together again. Here's the new one. And remembering that he was on the left before, so we just kind of they clip right back together like that. And we're going to plug them both up back up to, to the port up there. So it goes right in there and it snaps right back into place. Give it a few tugs. That's part of our uh, latch. Make sure that latch mechanism is nice and tight and goes back up top there. So as we look up from the hub towards the back where it popped out of the wall there, you wanna pay close attention here. And this is a clip here attached to the brake fluid line. So we gotta make sure that he snaps onto there. As we go in and take a closer look, you can see how both of those lines are now clipped onto the brake line. And then, if you look right up behind it, right here on the wall where my finger is pointing way in the back there, just came into focus way on the back, they have to route up and clip onto that little clasp also. Okay, so you see how it, see how it's clipped right in there nicely? So now, both of our cables are secured there. Now you start putting back all of the nuts and the rivets that were holding the shield in place. All right, so before I insert the new ABS brake sensor inside the wheel hub, I'm going to vacuum out back here in that porthole where it goes. Okay, 
Okay, so that just makes sure that we get all of the dust and dirt that's out of there. Okay, so now you just push the new one right into place there. And we'll run the bolt right through the loop there. And just tighten it back in. There you see it now, looking nice and clean and brand new and ready to go. Okay, so anytime I have a chance to get a wheel off of a car, I always love to use this as a great opportunity to clean the inside of the, the wheel, the barrel, everything. So here I'm going to use my Meguiar's All Wheel Cleaner. I also like to use the Griot's Garage and the Sonax. And both of them, oh, those other brands are good, but Meguiar's and Sonax are the only two that when you spray them on like this, and after a couple of minutes, it'll turn purple, meaning that it's reacting with the iron and the brake dust, so you know it's starting to clean. So you spray it on dry. You just go all the way around. Okay, now that a couple of minutes have elapsed, I give it another real quick spray. Then I use my wheel woolly here to go ahead and clean the barrel. When you have a nice, clean, shiny barrel on the inside like this, all the way to the front where the, the spokes are here, it will look a lot cleaner from the outside because all the sunlight will now reflect and glitter off of the, the nicely cleaned metal here. And we just hit it with the powerful stream of water. All right, so now that we've completed the chemical cleaning and rinsed it off, you can see it got about 80% of it. And uh, that agitation helped quite a bit. So now we're just gonna take our soap brush. There she is in all of her glory. Who knew that this was nice and shiny and silver? So let's flip it over now and do the front side of the wheel. Okay, so remember, Meguiar's usually wants you to put this stuff on dry. In fact, most of the manufacturers do, so that you're not diluting it, but that's okay, because this wheel was already pretty clean from the outside anyways. Okay, so now we just crank down the jack. Okay, so now comes the moment of truth. Start the engine, see if it gives us any problem here. And so far, there's no problem. There's no check engine light. The alert message went away. And make sure you release the parking brake. And it looks like all is back to normal now. The problem was if the sensor is bad, it's not sending a signal at all to the computer. So the computer was seeing that we didn't get a signal there. So that's why it flashed up that alarm. Okay, so there you have it. And you can see you don't even need to clear the error because the condition will reset itself once the bad condition goes away. Don't forget to tighten the lug nuts all the way. And if you have a, and if you have a torque wrench, Make sure you tighten it to the manufacturer's specs. Well, I know we've covered a lot of details, but as you can see, this is a very complex situation here and a big job to handle here. So if you like what you've seen so far and you've learned a lot from this video, hey, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Just click on that thumbs up button down below that tells us that you like us. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the carbuyingtips.com channel yet, hey, why not? Go ahead and click that subscribe button down below there and click that little gray bell icon next to it. And when you do that, make sure that you choose to receive all notifications from this channel. That way when we upload a video, you'll be notified. Well, that's it for this week, folks. Thank you so much for checking in with us and we'll see you on the next one.